So welcome, uh, Rishi. We uh, look forward to hearing what you have to say. Hi, I'm Rishi. Hi, I'm Rishi Ranjit, CEO of Great Raster. And first, I would like to thank AW to invite me here. Uh, at Great Raster, we have an enterprise mixed reality platform. Uh, it is basically a cloud platform, very focused on aerospace and defense and automotive companies right now. Uh, we, are, we are working with these verticals and creating a solution for these verticals, and uh, that is what we are going to tie up on right now. We will later on conclude with some very specific use cases we are solving with our current customers and their partners. Uh, most of our customers, the way the reason we started building the platform is that all the verticals that we are talking, automotive and aerospace and defense, everyone has the three major pain points with the platform we have today. First is that they have a very large data set. So the CAD data, CAM data they have, they have to really decimate uh, and it takes the weeks of time. So it, it's a, and every time you change this, the process needs to be repeated. So instead of uh, focusing on innovation and the use here they need to solve, they're spending a lot of time just preparing their data uh, to bring on the today's platform. Second is that our customers need to see the how these their virtual data should look in, uh, in the real life. It should be like real life data because many of our customers designing the next generation car, they are trying to see that how how in the mixed reality their uh, new kind of car seat will look like. Now, if you do, it doesn't look the same as what they do with the physical mockups. The use case, it doesn't really help them. And today's platform is like they're not able to achieve this. The other last one is like in every customer, they are aligning the virtual world with a very complex surfaces. So the real worlds are the not like a simple uh, a plane or a circle. These are like a real car parts on which they need to align their virtual world. And the platform today out there, they don't provide that performance, they don't provide the scale, and that's what uh, we have started building. And the, the platform that we have, what we do now to get uh, away from the restriction that exists in the today's platforms is that we suck in all the sensor data from today's uh, mixed reality platform, either iOS 2 or iPad, ta any kind of tablets. We bring it to the cloud, and on the cloud, we basically first take the camera data, reconstruct all the world from uh, that our customers are working on. Now, and then from there, we remove the clutter. Our 3D vision works on removing the clutter, the segmentation, and exactly figuring out in the 3D world what our customers are really interested to align their virtual data with. And on top of that, now we go ahead and align the virtual data. Typically, it's CAD data today, but uh, there can be other formats. Now, as soon as we align, the moment you go to the cloud, there are problems that latency and all issues will come in. And we take a, with our IP, we solve all of those problems as well in our product. Now, so without uh, this verticals, typically the customers are not buying IPs, they are buying a solution. And that's what we, we are providing the full cloud platform to our, uh, our uh, customers. Uh, so pardon me that our customer to use our single simple API to integrate into the application. It can be, this, these are the client side application and server application. They upload to the cloud platform and then it just gets installed into the client devices. After that, when the client devices want to connect to the respective server side uh, component, they will have to go through our authentication module. Once they are authenticated to uh, uh, use the platform, they will our the scalers will come up and they will start scaling the server side uh, uh, application automatically. All of these are fully uh, uh, we take care of all of this fully. So our customers are focused on enabling their use cases and not on the technology that really makes these use cases happen. And we are seeing that the platform is being used across the product life cycle. So uh, customers are building the car uh, planes you are in the, during the design phase. Operations and manufacturing, like they are using it for real-time uh, real uh, maintenance of the planes. Uh, also for the cars, similar use cases, so error detection in the manufacturing process. Uh, training is an obvious use case that we are seeing and also the customer experience like selling of the cars, selling of the planes. So all of, across this product life cycle, we are seeing the platform being used. And 
to make it happen uh, for these verticals. Uh, uh, we, I mean, we have built this platform very closely working with the customers and the platform has now come out in a shape so that uh, it can now ingest any large uh, CAD and CAM data with very minimum effort. And also, as we were talking that we do a very complex, uh, very complex alignment of virtual and real world. So we we uh, we look at the customer data. It's not it's not just about a, like a plain table or anything like that. We are aligning on top of the cables, like the customer. The, these planes have the cables going in their car dashboard. So those are the kind of scenario, and all of these are very uh, very harsh environment. So. Uh, the lighting is not that good. So we make it happen in all those uh, scenarios. We support any kind of device and even the platform is future proof because a lot of intelligence sits on the cloud, uh, cloud side, on the uh, cloud side. So devices, uh, on the device side, we support most of the devices today, but also any device that comes in the future, we will support all of those devices. And multi-user is a very important uh, because most of the use cases are for collaboration so uh, customers can collaborate everyone will see the world what uh, if on their own view but one person uh, working on and changing their world in the in the mixed reality world it will be reflected for everyone else and, and the, uh, we also provide the basic usability and interaction features so like if you need to do some guided procedure annotation all of those building blocks we provide and the last one is that every customer that we work with the data is very very private so uh, sometimes these are the like the, the, sometimes these data are the of defense data so uh, otherwise the cars that are not going to come out in the market for five years so the for, for them uh, they are never comfortable on the first time that their data will leave the premises so we do provide on-price on-premise uh, deployment as well as any cloud deployment and after that, like any data that leaves the tips, uh, the cloud, everything is end-to-end -end encrypted. So nothing really, uh, and, and since all the data is sitting on the cloud, by default, even if you lose your uh, HoloLens 2 or devices, your data is still secure. The data is, has not been compromised uh, to anyone. Uh, so just to recap, uh, the way we deploy is that your integration, both for the client and the server, is very simple API based. So, we have done it with multiple customers and it's, it is very, very seamless. Uh, we guarantee the infinitely scalable platform. So any number of devices you want to bring in, we will scale that in, we will scale that on the cloud, on the cloud side. Uh, we provide you with a performance you really need because without this, uh, mixed reality is a very powerful tool, but if you don't have the performance, you are not, our customers are not able to solve the problem that they're trying to attack. The current platform and the we are we, and we uh, make sure it's a device agnostic and not just for the device that exists today but also any future device that's are coming in the market a very quick recap that uh, from the if you look at today's platform standalone devices uh, they struggle at 100k polygon now just with a single gpu on the cloud platform we are able to reach 50 million polygon and this can be scaled with multi gpu solutions so any kind of data that you want to bring it can be scaled on the, on the platform uh, frame rate uh, uh, if today's platform like 60 fps you can achieve but only if your uh, assets are really uh, simple the moment you start increasing the complexity it drops and gives a very bad experience uh, with cloud platform you can scale like uh, you can bring in any kind of complexity and you get that 60 frames per second we may we ensure that whatever is your uh, network delay we will ensure that your motion to photon is second uh, a lot of our customers because they are doing they need a real-time mapping of the world for spatial mapping to the use cases that they're trying to enable now because of the battery restriction many devices there can only do let's say less than one frames per second we guarantee even that of 60 frames per second and there's very quickly that we provide a very uh, we work with these verticals to provide a 3d vision for these particular uh, verticals so our, which no one else provides like we can provide the tech but we are working with these verticals to make these uses happen now as we are saying that today we are focused on uh, uh, basically automotive and defense and space. We also work with telcos and MSO. So we strongly believe that 5G will play a major role where in, in the success of mixed reality and the problems with reality. But there, uh, we, I'm not going to talk about 5G in this issue, sorry, uh, the telcos and MSOs in this, uh, in this presentation. 
my colleague Dijam is talking in another session on 29th, and you, uh, he, there he will talk more about our work with Tarkos and MSOs. In this one, I will go through some very, very specific use cases, specifically two of them, one in automotive and one in defense space, and talk about that what kind of problem they are having and how we have solved those issues. Uh, first one, um, car design. So uh, what our customers are trying to do is they are now designing their uh, next generation car with mixed reality. Now with today's platform, what happens is that they have to keep decimating. So weeks goes in decimating by the time the designer has changed the design. So a lot of time is spent and wasted in just preparing the data. The second is that like uh, uh, these are big, they are big world. So objects are really big and alignment really doesn't work. Like you can align a small patch of things, but the other parts of will get uh, not alone. So, for example, if you align on top of the dashboard, the wheels or the uh, other parts of the car that you're trying to align the virtual objects, that will get misaligned. And then multi-user collaboration, a simple example is that uh, typically when you're designing, there are four people sitting on each seat of the car. One person is changing your design and others are reviewing and giving comment. Now, these are very harsh environment. Inside the car design, like it's a complete dark world. So, irrespective of whatever is there, you have to make sure that all these devices are really synced up. Everyone is seeing the right world from their point of view. Uh, all of those from the cloud point of view, as we talk that now our customers, like the way they can bring in their 3D assets as well, without, without, with a very, very minimal uh, friction. And so now uh, the fact that CAD data can come on the platform as it is, we provide like we are not when we are when we do alignment we are not just doing alignment of one object but we are looking at the object segmenting it and now we are doing part by part alignment so from whichever way you want to go you can go ahead and every every whichever view you want to see objects will be aligned on top of the right parts at the, at the right place and for for the multi user also we have looked at the ways that you can uh, bring the your 3D vision can keep working in, even in very harsh environment. And so that's what like we are uh, now with, with our platform, what our customers are able to do now is that they can spend more time in iteration because these complex, expensive machines, they, they are under tremendous pressure to complete it on time because delays are very expensive for the customers. So they want to spend that time on iteration and not really preparing the data. And with our platform, we give them that ability to do that. We start from the your uh, digital twin 3D model. That's where the core of the 3D vision is built on. But in the end, we have built a combination of the the, the, the model tracking and the image tracking together, which is what gives us this, uh, which is what gives us the ability to work in it, even in a very very harsh environment where our customers are working. Uh, I'm going to switch to uh, another use case. This is a uh, repair and maintenance use case in aerospace and defense uh, so here what our customers are doing is that they are what they want to really accelerate and and basically enhance the employee's efficiency in fixing the planes when uh, like fixing repairing maintaining the planes uh, this particular use case is about really the correct uh, maintenance of the wiring it's a very very hard problem so all the problems that we talked about for the car use case this also this has all of those so we solve those but this has two much harder problem is that in this world the wires that you are trying to augment on the one that you are trying to work with it's a huge clutter of wires routing clamps on which you have to make sure that things are correctly aligned and also the lighting is like you have, you have no idea where you are repairing these things. So the lighting, the kind of surfaces you are trying to align with, those are much, much complex than what we see with our uh, automotive partners. And for these customers, what we have done that, as we said that with all the, without destination, the same uh, value and is there for our the current customers, these uh, air, automotive uh, air space customer also. But also on top of that, what we give them the tool is that when they want to create a, a maintenance instruction, if they want to say that, hey, this thing should go on a yellow cable, in that clutter, you have to really put that on that yellow cable. You have to figure out that in the basically clutter of wire clamps. After that, they are also trying to make sure that your data is, like your cables are really clamped at the right position. So your uh, 3D vision becomes much more complicated, but 
I, but, but that is where like once you start solving this problem the roi is, is huge so now with reduction in time what you can do that what we are able to what we are working uh, with these customers you can you are the savings that you are looking at is in like it, it's like hundreds of million dollar because a wrong cable going in the wrong place can really bring down the pages also the pages uh, with that i would like to thank uh, thank everyone and really happy to answer any questions Rishi, thank you so much. Uh, really, really interesting stuff that you guys are, are working on. Um, I think uh, you know we have time for a couple of questions. Uh, you know, one of them when you when you think about the level of complexity for whether it's aerospace or industry in general, um, maybe you could talk a little bit about that content creation. You know, when you when you talk about a really complex system of you know individual wires and wiring harnesses and you know, uh, components inside an aircraft where you're utilizing augmented reality to train. Um, you know, what does it really take to create that content in the background, and and, and how do you go about doing that? Yeah, uh, yeah. Thanks, Rich, for the question. And so, um, one uh, what we have realized in the air, basically defense and space and automotive is that. All of them are working all out of CAD CAM tools like Katia. So, and they have already worked for these for the last 20, 30 years. So these verticals are really mature in how to handle the content they have been using for quite some time. Uh, so I think so what we have realized with these verticals is that the problem is not really creating the content because they are very, very uh, they are very advanced on those fronts because they have been working. The tools are standardized. Katia tools are standardized. It, already there, there are plugins which can pull that in Unity. Their biggest time was being spent that how do you bring that on HoloLens 2 or iPad? Because uh, as we mentioned that you spend three weeks trying to uh, decimate it. By the time the designers are changing or our customers are flying to a different location where review is happening. And now that is the what takes the most amount of their time so for these verticals we have i mean i would say that uh, the way we have seen it is that the content creation is really very advanced so we did not have to spend that much time on that more uh, uh, more problem was that decimation was the biggest problem on their side okay yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense and you know some other questions have come up in some earlier conversations as it relates to vr and um, you know, one of the consistent questions that's come up is, you know, how 5G um, impacts our ability to deliver VR, um, uh, you know, whether it's more remotely or through a, through a, uh, uh, a hosted network of 5G. Do you, do you see 5G enabling you to um, provide the same type of solution, um, you know, more remotely than we can even do today? So, so the way we are seeing right now, again, next one year, uh, compared to 5G, Wi-Fi 6 and all this technology are coming now. 5G also really the millimeter wave which can um, penetrate. Now, we have not seen at one location that kind of uh, uh, demand like most of our customers are using are that 20 HoloLens 2 at a location. So uh, Wi-11 AC does a very good job. If you want to go beyond 20 in those location, now Wi-Fi 11 AC, the current wifi generation Wi-Fi is useless because you're you're just colliding your packets. You're not doing anything useful. Uh, the next generation, the Wi-Fi 6 helps quite a bit in that, but Wi-Fi is still, the technology itself is kind of, uh, uh, the moment you start increasing the number of devices in our use cases, we see that that is where that it will be real impact that uh, some customers have really like they are trying to put thousands of devices in the manufacturing location. That is where we see that the Wi-Fi will break. Like uh, So that is where we believe that 5G will make a major uh, uh, change. Uh, at least in these vertical, what we see is that our customers will not send that data out to anywhere else that easily. The data is like classified data, really proprietary data. So uh, the servers are always going to be in their control on premise, uh, either locked into the uh, colos and those things. So I don't think that in these verticals for next one or two years, we will have an option to send this data far away, away from the customer control. Uh, 5G definitely we believe it will help mix reality a lot, but uh, in these scenarios in manufacturing, we see it will help when you kind of surpass Wi-Fi 6 capacity, and that is where the uh, uh, in the other 5G will start making a real difference. Okay, maybe one last final question. You know, when we talk about leveraging the computing power of the cloud and 
um, you know, using AI. Uh, the other consistent question that has come up has been around privacy. And certainly if you're working with aerospace companies and, and industries, there it's a, a great concern of them to maintain um, security. And uh, can you tell us a little bit about how your platform um, tackles, you know, the issue of um, privacy and security for uh, for these companies? Sure. Uh, so uh, we have seen it the other way around in air, uh, defense and space and aerospace. So what has happened that our customers are very concerned that if you put all the assets on HoloLens 2, someone can uh, not uh, not on purpose. They can very it's very easy to leave with that device. Now you go to a coffee place, you leave the device. Now all the assets are lost. So that was the big problem that Immersive was not able to get into these customers because the, uh, losing that data was very very critical. Now, so what they have become, the reason it has started ramping up is that now, because everything is sitting on the cloud and this cloud is in their control. Like we run our software, but in the end, our customers own these, this and their uh, account. So that gives them a lot of, um, a lot of comfort that uh, they can really control these uh, servers, these networks. And we do end-to-end -end control all those net security keys, everything is owned by them, but all the assets, all the AI, every everything is owned by our customer. We give them a platform. We never see the real data. And most probably with these customers, we will never see the real data. So what we do with our customers that we work with the canned data and these are classified data and those things. So they, in the end, what data they will use, we keep helping them to make it better. That handholding is required, but they're very comfortable putting those things on the on-prem servers because now all of those camera data, their all in, uh, proprietary data is completely safe in their hand. Okay. No, that's great. I really appreciate it. Uh, it was a it was a great talk. I appreciate you taking the time. Uh, it was a, a pleasure uh, listening to your presentation and wish you the best of luck. Thanks so much. Stay safe and be well. Thanks, Rich. And thanks, Adoli. Yeah. Thanks. All right, Rich. Be good. Bye.